Initially, very good protection, and there are flags down everywhere. Holding number 64 of the offense. Kelly's decline. The ball was fumbled. First down. Mike, Eagle football. You talked about William Perry and what he brings to this defense. All he does is bring a push, and that's what he does here. Number 90 just keeps on pushing Loudermilk back and back and back. He just keeps driving and driving and driving. Nothing fancy, nothing cute. He just keeps on coming, and Clyde Simmons comes around and strips the ball. Huge break for the Eagles. They take over at the 14-yard line. Walker and Joseph are the running back. Bavaro in the slot. Brister over the middle, wide open, Williams, touchdown. And it looked like the Colts were changing defenses right as the ball was snapped, and somebody blew it. That's what happens when you move a tight end outside of a wide receiver. All of a sudden, the safety doesn't know whether he should go with them or whether he should stay. This time, the safety didn't go. Bubby couldn't get this thing in the air quick enough. Calvin Williams with his ninth touchdown catch of the year ties the record that he set as a rookie. Rusek to make it a two touchdown lead. And he does. The Eagles, as a result of the turnover, strike on the first play. 8.30 to go third quarter, 14-point lead for the Eagles. Mike, this is what happens when you catch a defense rotating. Right now, they're set up in a double zone, two up, two back. As movement starts, you'll see this safety run up. What happens is Calvin Williams going to go into a hole that's going to be there naturally. Safety runs up. Weak safety can't get over. Bubby can't get the ball out soon enough. Calvin Williams told us, he said, hey, when I get in the red area, I look to find a hole in the defense. He didn't have to look very hard for that. <laughs> no, he certainly didn't. Had nine as a rookie, now has nine this year. Homer and Verdan, deep to receive. Clarence Verdan from the eight. And gets it across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. 17-3 Eagles, 8-21 to go third quarter, back in a moment. the site of the world's largest Masonic temple in downtown Indianapolis, built in 1928 at a cost of 30 million bucks in 1928. Just beat the crash, I guess. Colts down the ball at their own 27. Cotton back in the ballgame after being out with a sprained ankle, crosses the 30 to the 32. Mike, one of the problems you have with field position on kickoffs, and and I've noticed this with the Colts, is watch the kickoff return team. As we go down, as the Eagles come down, watch what Clarence Ferdinand catches the ball. Stop it right there. Clarence Ferdinand has the ball. All the blocks are being made up here 30 yards away. That means that the Eagles have an opportunity to play off the blocks and make a tackle. Colts back, keeping it on the ground, get up to only about the 34-yard line. See, I, what happens, Mike, is you've got to move the blockers back closer to the return man so that when a block is made, he's got something to cut off of and head up the field. Right now, they're doing a good job blocking, but heck, they can knock you down, you get back up, you make a tackle. Brad Seeley, the, uh, the special teams coach. Third and four for the Colts, who need to get something started on offense desperately. George with time. And incomplete Langhorn couldn't hold it. Ben Smith was there with him. You know, Mike, when you throw the ball that flat, and I know Jeff George has been learning to do this, and I think this is something he's going to have to work on, you have to throw such a perfect pass. Left part of your screen, watch the ball. This thing comes out flat. There's nobody back there. You can hang this over the left shoulder. Instead, you have to put it right over Ben Smith's head. It's a tough catch. I mean, it should have been made. But it can be made a lot easier if you throw the ball to a margin of error side. One out of every four possessions this year, the Colts have been three and out. 
Sikahemel with a chance to return. Drilled in the back as he got to the 33, and a flag comes in late after a nine-yard return. Number 32 on the, on the return, 10 yards, first down, timeout. James Joseph, the running back, called to the hole. That will back the Eagles up. Simmons with his Randall Cunningham hat on the sideline. Cunningham, there's been speculation, might have come back for this ball game. Examined by the doctor in the middle of this week, and the doctor ruled the bone had not sufficiently healed. So he didn't give him the medical clearance, and Cunningham is out for the rest of the year. Rich Kotite said if he'd have been 100%, he would have loved to have had him back for the stretch run. But uh, it's a moot point right now, and Randall will be ready for next season. So Bobby Brister takes over at the 21-yard line. Herschel, big hole. Zaragoza closed it in a hurry, but couldn't hold him. And then Herschel out near the 26. Quentin Corey had finally made the tackle. And Bobby, you, uh, uh, you're supposed to hand off with your left hand if the back is on the right side. I can just tell you that for those of you that don't understand the quarterback position. And what he does is he basically hands off with his right hand. And I am absolutely shocked in the last two weeks that he has not had a fumbled exchange. I mean, that's a credit to his running backs and a credit to him. Because his hand has to hit the running back every time he hands off. Second and four after the game six for Walker. Here comes the blitz. Brister on the lows and Joseph drops it. And Coriak gives him a seat for his trouble. Rick Venturi, he, he knows he can't hold back. He doesn't have the horses up front. They can do it alone. The front four guys can't go it alone. So what he's doing is he's bringing those linebackers when he gets a chance. He also knows his offense uh, hasn't scored since the middle of last month. His defense has got to turn something in. Well, the defense has got to make a play. Right now, they're going to have to stop the Eagles and get the offense on the field with decent field position. Third and four, Brister throws to Herschel Walker. First down at the 32. Almost every time they have needed something tonight, Herschel Walker's been the guy. You know, in talking to Rich Coates, I like, Richie says, we've thrown like 20 balls to Herschel in the last two games. He says, sooner or later, people are going to catch on. He said, but they haven't stopped them yet. This is an excellent job of knowing where to go making the decision with the route and giving the quarterback a target to throw at. Six catches tonight, 29 yards, eight carries, 45 yards for Walker. Joseph tries to cut it outside, slowed down by John Hamm, and he gets a lot of help. Jason Felser, Harad, Hand makes the initial hit. Number 78, John Hand. The influence blocked by Herschel doesn't work. He holds strong in position. That time, Lester Holmes couldn't root him out. And Belzer comes in from the offside to put him away. Boy, Belzer has been playing very close to the line. He's been giving him an eight-man front. Second and 13 after the loss. Another blitz. Richter throws. Pavaro. And Belzer hanging on for dear life. Vintage Mark Bavaro with the great hands, the great strength. And the one thing about having him in an Eagle uniform, at least he can't kill him anymore the way he used to. <laughs> I think that's, that's the happiest thing Richie Kotite had happen was that Bavaro got rid of the blue jersey and put on a green white one. And Rich Kotite couldn't be happier with the play of Mark Bavaro this year. The most complete tight end he's ever had. Third and six for the Eagles. 4.04 to go to third quarter. Brister wants the screen. They've got it covered. So Brister throws the other way, and Joseph can't make the catch. 